What's up, good people? Welcome back to the channel today for a another review. Uh, Will joins me today as we're going to be reviewing the three-part docu series "Dangerous Breed: Crime, Cons, and Cats," coming to Peacock November twenty-second. All three parts, about an hour each. This is a binge drop, which means yes, you're getting all three episodes on the same day. Uh, before we get into uh, this non-spoiler review of this docuseries, I, I definitely want to, uh, one, throw a disclaimer, but also uh, start off by uh, stating something very important because this is a very sensitive subject matter. Um, and I want to make sure um, in, 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 the, in the sensitivity of that, we start off by saying, because this is sort of tied into a missing persons case, Sam Fiddler if you know anything about a whereabouts, there is a number you can contact 800-226-1140. Um, regardless of anything um, that's being detailed in this docuseries, the most important thing is that there is a mother of three, uh, three kids, an indigenous woman at that as well, uh, which I could talk about that in its own entirety, um, that is missing. Um, so yes, if you have any information about her whereabouts, 800-226-1140. Um, and also, the second disclaimer is that by watching this, and, and I'm, I am a film critic, um, and, and, and Will is a part of Big Gold Belt Media, there's nothing about watching this that glamorizes or uh, sort of, what's the word here, uh, sort of builds or adds to a celebrity about Teddy Hart. No, um, not at all. <laughs> this this is not that. Um, and I and I and I want to say that for anybody who has recently watched Unsolved Mysteries, three seasons on Netflix, what I feel when it comes down to docu series, when it's dealing with true crime and um and and murder mysteries, and, and in this case, missing persons, this is an opportunity to provide major exposure to something that wasn't working in the small network. You have somebody like this filmmaker who went out here thinking he was doing one thing, realizing that he was actually being uh, you, his content will be used for something else. And while he's just one individual, or maybe a couple of folks around him, you know, putting this on a major network, which in this case, Peacock, which in Unsolved Mysteries case, Netflix has the potential to reach multiple people, which I can attest that in um, Unsolved Mysteries. There have been cases that have been solved because now it had reached more folks. So by watching this, this is what I feel the purpose of it, to let folks know more about, you know, not just protecting people from the likes of folks like Teddy Hart, but also exposing the folks that, uh, one, the dangers of indigenous women, but in particular, Sam Fittler, who's missing, and it's pretty much a cold case right now. So hopefully... Um, by this release again, November twenty second, um, this this starts to uh, uh, reach a, a bigger and wider network that it, uh, that the story originally had had had, um, and and hopefully bring Sam home because again it's it's a sad story again a mother of three kids and um, again just another case of um, just the dangers of indigenous women um, in this country um, a long lengthy history of documented cases of missing indigenous women and this is just another so by all means before we get into that i just wanted to make sure we threw this disclaimer out that like hey there's nothing glamorizing teddy hart there's nothing about adding towards his celebrity and doing so here um this look at this in a positive light in in terms of this could reach more folks uh folks who, who may have never heard of this story folks who may have seen her who may be able to now uh contribute in a positive way to bringing sam home so i uh, wanted to start off with that but um will <laughs> where do we start here because what what a story on our hands um here and, uh, and although we're pro wrestling fans um um and and, and will is a father and um and 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 some of this story is close to us um and, and but overall just for the sake of humanity it's just a sad story in general um uh what was, was sort of your emotions going into this and and now have seen the uh the first three episodes or the the total series the three episodes yeah uh i would describe this thing as a roller coaster from beginning to end because it's divided into three parts and the three parts uh, it spans a decade 
this entire thing. And it starts out with the idea that, okay, you know, we, there's he got this director and he's trying to find a rea- trying to do a reality show. He's trying to get his big break in Hollywood and he gets hooked up with Teddy Hart. And it's like, all right, here's this crazy wrestler guy and he trains cats on the side and he has like these girls that he lives with. And this is going to be my ticket to like getting my foot in the door and like having like a reality show. And I got the, cr- yeah. I got the right, you know, a character. It's going to be attention getting to make this thing happen. And like the whole first episode really kind of focuses on that with just like, this is what the idea was. This is how this whole thing gets started. And then very quickly it starts to unravel where yeah. it just, the darkness starts to seep in from all directions. And then as it goes on, it just, it's just a straight shot down yeah. and it, it, it don't get, it, it doesn't really bounce back in any kind of way. There's a couple attempts at, you know, maybe Teddy's going to turn a corner. Maybe Teddy's going to get his act together. But as we quickly figure out, there is a long dark history here of manipulation and abuse and this is not for the faint at heart this is a very serious story there there, there's there's the trailer showing you all the crazy stuff with the cats and all that and it's like oh my god what this is like you know i think in a lot of ways people are going to initially see that trailer and think of it as like a new version of the tiger king or something and there's a similarity there but this is grittier in a much different way, I would say. Yeah, um, and also, if I could speak for you for a second, and and, and although I didn't uh, share the same sentiments, but indeed I did. Um, yeah, the Tiger King, that's a good comparison because upon watching that, the first thing you could think is like, oh, wow, this is going to go viral. This is craziness. Mm-hmm. But upon watching this, there was a lot of moments of this decompression. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. lot that, that, that this emotionally... Uh, just pulls you by the tie and you just kind of have to sit back and realize like there is a lot happening here and i you know watching uh the three episodes after each one is just kind of this big like moments of just exhaling and saying like this is completely insane and you used a couple of words i was going to use as well too uh but i i'll add a couple that i that um that uh was missing here uh, by all means this guy's a lunatic and he's certainly a predator and mm-hmm. you know whatever the trailer shows you and whatever you know about him uh which probably will collaborate a lot of, of what you're going to see in this but it's still is surreal when not only do you see his antics but then when we start to see from his survivors um and what they had to endure firsthand and then the 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 um the the manipulation displayed from one period to another you say it's a, it's a span of a decade so that means yeah we're getting um interviews and footage from a certain year and then come back a couple of years later and the stories are are, are uh the reality of those initial stories starts to become real in terms of really labeling what was happening here and mm-hmm. um it's it's sad. It's sad, and and I can say that you know for the first three episodes, I keep saying the first three episodes. It's only three episodes, excuse me. Um, that yeah, the first episode, as much you say, is a much introduction of to who he is, but then it quickly turns into uh, Machiko, uh, independent pro wrestler Machiko, uh, who has uh, we've we've seen wrestle uh, a couple of times in our area, um, in her survivor story. And then it turns into the second episode is when we get the introduction of Samantha Fittler mm-hmm. and, 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 and her story, which, you know, right now, missing persons case from it being one way, very similar to the beginning of the Machiko story to it becoming something much more dire towards the end. Uh, I should also mention, too, uh, in, in the first episode also uh, details his uh his uh, polyamorous relationship with his wife Mm -hmm. and and a partner. And and then they kind of come around to a new light by the second episode. But then the third episode very much becomes a episode of unsolved mystery in its entirety. Mm -hmm. It is the big question and which I want to know as well too, is where is Samantha Fittler? That's the big question Mm -hmm. with episode three. And by no means, because I'm just keep saying this, do they glorify Teddy? Do they make him a celebrity? In fact, Will, I'm going to give it to you because you took the words right out of my mouth when you said it. 
but they make sure they hold him very, very much accountable. What was the terminology that yeah. you used in terms of how they how they had the editing working here? Oh, they do a great job by the end of this. Uh, once everything comes full circle and you get all the different versions of every woman that's been with him having these horrible stories and all this, where we get to the end of things. And like you said, in the third episode, it really does become kind of like Unsolved Mysteries where it's like, all right, can, can we find out any information directly from him as to what is going on? And with such a long history of manipulation, you can just see the gears turning in his head of like, how do I wiggle out of this question? How do I sidestep this? How do I, you know, make myself look good here? How do I dodge this bullet? And the problem now is there's a decade of film behind this whole thing. And it can quickly be pulled up where it's like, you answer it this way. Uh, you know what? Here you said this though from two years ago and we got you on camera saying it oh over here you said this by the way we got this footage right here that this happened and the memory's not all there and it's it's with the history of the decade laid out like that it's it's damning it, yeah. it, it's really damning and it's it's a, it's a it's a tough watch because i think we get to the end of it and like i said you said at the beginning there is a number to call there, there is no concrete answer. I think there's a good theory as to what might have happened, but this is an open case. This is an open case right now. So hopefully this is going to get somewhere and get in front of some eyeballs and maybe there'll be a break. Maybe there'll be something that will come of it. But the problem is no one's the guy who should know the most about it. Teddy Hart doesn't want to shed any real light on it. And that's yeah. the problem. It's like, does anyone else out there know anything substantial to, to add into the timeline? And they do a great job in the third episode of really breaking down the final timeline across social media of what we know at what points, what concrete evidence there is before things go dark. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I just had an idea and I'll, I'll, I'll share it in a second. But um, yeah, uh, I just want to make sure, too, that we uh, also um, and, and I can't pronounce his last name, uh, but this is from the canadian filmmaker frederick something with a k uh my approach i think okay yeah c uh, excuse me k-r-o-e-t-s-c-h and again you know this was him you know for 10 years filming teddy hart thinking that he had the next big reality star and listen you have to think back into the days of Flavor Flav and Real Chance of Love and all these sorts of things that really made a lot of people a lot of money, a lot of networks, a lot of money, a lot of folks, you know, you know, getting near five to five to 10 years of fame because of these things. And, you know, he went from doing uh, he said he was shooting cats. He was like making like these little cat videos and whatnot. And mm -hmm. somebody pitched him an idea of this and. If you are an independent wrestling fan, then you know it is a really very niche community, but there is a lot of characters, a lot of potential. I can say that I, I've seen many folks, you know, document other wrestlers and make documentaries. I mean, PCO uh, has one, which is really cool. Um, we we had the uh, uh, what, what's the guy name? The the um the something liberal. What's his name? Oh, uh, uh, the progressive liberal. The progressive yes. liberal who had his big documentary break on Vice TV, uh, a lot of publicity. So, like, it's not out of the norm for somebody to say, hey, this makes sense, other folks were doing it, and so on. And, and for the wrestling fans, yeah, you know, they do give you a very broad understanding of what independent wrestling is. And because this is, you know, a 10-year span of recording, yeah, you, you see the likes of some wrestlers that have, were on the independence at the time. I saw saw Sanjay, saw the Bucks, uh, saw um, um, you know they they got uh, footage of Machiko training. So Lainey Luck is there. Um, who else? It was a couple other folks I saw. Roger Strong was there as well too. So like you know they, they they it was a brief display of what independent wrestling was, and then it was a brief introduction as to why how Teddy Hart is connected to that. And then what was who is Teddy Hart in terms of this cat breeder, you know, being part of the Hart family, having his own school, you know, being the youngest uh, person to ever be signed yet fired from WWE, which, by the way, there's some WWE footage. And you would say, well, why would WWE be co-signed to this? Let's not forget that they're all on the same network. Peacock here. So it was a no brainer that they could just 
pull from that archives a little bit of stock footage in order to really enhance this documentary. Um, but yeah, as you said, it's just at times it's extremely hard to watch, and it's and it's really hard to to, to process sometimes because although there's no physical abuse being shown here, the mental abuse and the psychological abuse mm -hmm. is monumental to the point that again by watching this in your own home you will feel this tension this this cringiness but yet this pain and suffering from the survivors there's a lot that really um you know you really you you really take from this and and, and fred is not an investigative journalist so like you know this was not his his job to come in and and, and realize that he was coming into this to to uh really inherit uh, a missing persons case but in fact, again, as I said, from the footage of thinking he's going to pitch a reality show, which I think he pitched it twice and it got shot down to the point now where it's like, no, this is actually much more than you ever could imagine. You have mm -hmm. footage, you have sort of a, a level of connectability that could help this family. Sam's army, Sam's best friend, Sam's sister, all these folks who's looking to connect the dots, which I will say this now. You wonder because the last she was seen was in Florida. And you wonder Florida's investigation. Uh, you wonder Florida's um, contribution and and their uh, uh, and, and 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 what their contribution was to the investigation here. And it's very clear that, like, again, this is why, like, like something that's like, like, it, it really bothers me is that I just feel like because the fact that she's an indigenous woman, they was just like, hey, our hands are off on this. There's no contribution from Florida. Uh, uh, police department yeah. at all with this it's just yeah, an old case yeah there was the whole issue for years that florida wasn't touching it because she was a canadian citizen and canada wasn't touching it because it didn't happen in canada so it kind of fell through the cracks for years there and then of course there's also the issue of she's an adult and there's no direct evidence of a crime so it's just kind of like well an adult disappeared that's all we yeah. know from a legal yeah. perspective there's no evidence of foul play or anything you know concrete so it there it, it's frustrating when once they get to the breakdown where it's like a lot of time passes we're just pretty much like her sisters were scouring social media kind of hoping for some kind of word and just not finding anything yeah yeah um so th this is my idea and you know that that's our spoiler free uh review of this um folks uh again all three episodes are available on peacock november 22nd um we're going to take a second we're going to tap into some spoiler stuff um and if you're not ready for that then come back at the at, at the appropriate time but i want to kind of open it up to really touch up on the things that really was in this that was just kind of just mind-boggling and there's a particular thing that i'm pretty sure uh you want to touch up on too in terms of episode three, because I, I'm, as soon as I, as soon as I brought up Florida, I was like, Oh yeah, I, I, it's something I want to talk about here. <laughs> so um, folks, yeah, again, that's the end of the spoiler review, non-spoiler review. We're going to jump into some spoiler stuff. So come back with the appropriate time. All right, Will. So when we were watching this, it was a particular aspect to this that I, I don't know if we seen coming at all. I don't even think that, and, and and although you know again being fans and being a part of the wrestling community we were very much aware of the speaking out movement and what a vital part that played into the exposure um of a lot of, of a lot of wrongdoing within the community i remember when machiko um tweet uh came out and just how game-changing that was and how that really got other folks got to talking as well too um her having the courage to do so um and and, and it in you know Looking at it on Twitter back then, you say, like, you know, these women, brave, super brave to do this. Mm -hmm. But now actually seeing the full story, I mean, I've always been a fan of her. Uh, again, got to meet a couple of times when she ran uh, ran in, in our in our, in our uh, independent scene uh, loop. And a uh, really good person. But, like, seeing the story full circle, uh, what a just a fantastic person. And, and what level of bravery and courage to really... Go through all this that we see, but then also to be able to put that tweet out as if everything else she hadn't already been through had had already been traumatizing enough, you know, already having to process that. But then still to say, like, I have to confront this and help others. 
But um, the, the the thing that really, really, really uh was like the mind blowing thing to me is when we started to take a look into Sam's last location and mm-hmm. realizing that Sam had got attached to Teddy because Sam was promised um a, a career in pro wrestling mm-hmm. and MMA and. I gotta tell you, when Teddy says this, this is like it's it's borderline top notch, disgusting because we know the truth, and then the truth comes out in the documentary because he was like, "Oh, I got some folks down in Florida, you know, really big time promoters that can get her a, a, a good get, and you know, we'll we'll hook her up, and you know, she'll be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera." Little did we know, he was talking about Team Vision Dojo. Ah, uh, yes. And if you've never heard of this wrestling s- school, uh, quick Google gets you all the information you need. <laughs> but in case you don't want to do that, they lay it all out in this documentary, which is another reason why I say that this documentary does not glamorize uh, the wrongdoers because they quickly, quickly expose Chase and Rance, who is the school owner here. I was damn near jaw dropping surprised that they let this man in for a documentary uh, for for interview in this documentary but then quickly made sure that they say oh yeah if you if whatever y'all think about this guy we're gonna let y'all know right now what it really is what yeah, was your yeah, thoughts yeah, when they I, brought this in yeah as a disclaimer if you know about chase and rants uh you can google it if you don't know but he does appear in this documentary he is interviewed but they also make it very clear all of the uh things he has been convicted of and of the various activities that go on at Team Vision Dojo involving customs and uh, other such things. Uh, I'm surprised he appeared on it. That was the biggest thing that got me, that he appeared on it, but I don't know if they straight up told him, look, we're, we're going to put all your business on here. So I'm glad they you know, made it very public what his story is and uh, what he's been convicted of publicly and served time for. So, yeah, it, you get Teddy Hart's creepy enough. And then when you add in, oh, and he's also traveling in these circles, and this is where he brought her to train, and it it doesn't help things. It does not help things at all. And that's and that's really the story of Teddy Hart that we see in this documentary. Whether it was Machiko, whether it was his wife Faye or his girlfriend Michelle, he was the king of promising all these things and you know it this isn't anything exclusive to wrestling this is like you know any hollywood story of like you know these young girls with big dreams and they're gonna do all this stuff and this is the guy that's gonna get their foot in the door and make all this stuff happen and in reality he's just sucking them dry of every little thing he can get out of them to prop him up and for him to live his life and for him to have a car and for him to have money to spend And he's not going to leave them with anything. He's just going to squeeze every last little bit of juice out of them. And that's really the big, I think, cautionary tale here is we have a decade of footage of Teddy doing this with, if you include Samantha, four different women. Yeah. And who knows what he's doing today. He is out there. He is out there. He is, you know... On, on the scene and wrestling here and there. So who knows who he's currently involved with, but this is a cautionary tale. Yeah. Ted, Teddy's, you know, served some time in jail, but he is currently out there. He, he is, he is out and about in public right now. So yeah. Something and, to keep in mind folks. And you mentioned four women and we know about a fifth and who knows what's between the, the fourth and the fifth that we know, but yeah, right. I guess, you know, the other, the another, the next spoiler thing to, to kind of discuss here is, does Maria Maria Manic appear? And she does, but she's not a part of the documentary. It's nothing but YouTube footage from when he was going on that little YouTube rant, uh, yeah. a spree of content creating, but yet rants completely unhinged and cringy videos of where we see her in the car with him, her in the background, her sitting on the couch, all those videos that we've seen in well, I tell you, they really they took the high road on that one because there was definitely some other videos that had came out with the two of them that were not so at all watchable. Very bad. Yeah. But um, yeah, so there is no Maria Manic uh, aspect to this as well in terms of what we yeah, know. She's never named at any never, point in it. Ex- exactly. And what we know, that the the if you don't know, folks, it's just saying that like who he is is who he is. And he's a and he's a free man right now. I mean, yeah, he's on probation as of 2022 uh, for uh, 
So reading through the lines here, because this is what we you, you close the docuseries with. As of now, 2022, Teddy's on probation in the U.S. for an assault unrelated to Sam's disappearance. Folks, that assault is Maria Manic. That's easily what it is. And he continues to wrestle. And also, uh, Florida has never been questioned about uh, the, the the Florida law enforcement had never been questioned on the uh, whereabouts of Sam. So, you know, the big takeaways from that as well is, is, is the current status of where uh, what's up with Teddy and the current status of the investigation of, of Sam Fittler. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else to, to, to you want to add in here? Um, I, I, I know we explore Teddy being on the run from the U.S. Mm-hmm. to Canada to back to right. the U.S. to Mexico, just on the run. He's as a dual citizen. So um, he thinks it's not that hard, but come on now. You're, you're not going it, to. It's, it's not, it's not going to be. But again, this is a person who always thought they can get away with anything. And so he thought he can just do this. Um, and certainly uh, we see it catch up to him really quickly. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. There's an interesting character in this uh, in, in this docuseries, and that happens to be B.J. Ennis. That oh, right, yes. that is a uh, Teddy Hart's dad, and I gotta say, I, I mean, I don't. The things he say are kind of tough truths, but it's just just hearing it. It's just a reality that just really caught me off guard. Um, in terms of his contributions in protecting your own, which means that like. And he and the and the sad thing about this is this is a father who very much is aware of Teddy's antics and protecting him in a sense because they said when it comes down to it you know it's about who has the most money in terms of lawyers and whatnot mm-hmm. and he's going to protect his own although he very much disowns Teddy as his son I I just that right there I just listening to his dad I was just kind of like uh this is <laughs> the I don't know, but uh, yeah. yeah the one other thing I wanted to get into was um, the director, Frederick Croach. It, it becomes very clear as we go through the series. It, he, he has to wrestle with the idea that, you know, this started out with the idea that this is going to be my ticket to reality show fame. This is going to get me into Hollywood. This is the crazy guy that's going to do this for me and how, you know, he needed that craziness. He he needed that, you know, something to hopefully get his foot in the door to make this reality show happen. Yeah. So at first it's like, okay, I need all this. And then as it goes on, and then once he finds out from, you know, Teddy's wife and the, the girl that was living with them, when they mm-hmm. first come clean about, hey, this ain't cool. This is what's really been going on. He gets the wake up call where it's like, wait, have I been enabling this kind of thing? in the name of, I need all this crazy content. I need their polyamorous relationship. And in the meantime, once I'm not there filming at night, he's abusing the hell out of these women and making yeah. them do all kinds of stuff. And as it goes on, you can tell it's like he has, this, he filmed him for 10 years. So it becomes like, I have all this footage. I'm trying to make something of it. But at the same time, this monster that is giving me this footage that I'm trying to do something with, how much of it am I enabling by putting this camera on him and essentially needing this monster to be a monster to make this story? It, it So I think in the end, it becomes like he tries to make some good out of it. I mean, like, okay, if I can shed light on Sam Fiddler's situation, if I can shed light on her case, if I can raise the profile that hopefully something good can come out of like this decade of time he spent working with Teddy because... Otherwise, there's not a whole heck of a lot of a positive that's come out of it. So hopefully this will get in front of somebody that yeah. knows something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the last other thing I want to say, uh, also somebody else who contributed to this documentary is Omar, who was a journalist from Rolling Stone, who had wrote that article about the rise and fall of Teddy Hart, which mm-hmm. then was a big uh, adequate part into the connection of things, uh, who helped uh, Sam's sister find mm-hmm. uh, Frederick in terms of trying to connect her last whereabouts. And, you know, not only that, we do get uh, an interview from uh, one of Sam's friends and Sam's friend who was able to uh, recount some of the moments of being with Sam and uh, Teddy and easily identifying that stuff was wrong. And even after 
he kind after she uh left from um from Teddy's side, you know, he kept in contact with her. So we we got some folks uh in their interviews in terms of the last days when she was completely visible um in rather social media or or any bit of communication as well. So uh yeah, Omar was a big part in kind of helping this kind of start to get connected as well. Um but I do I do and do you have anything else you want to add? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I do I do want to end this off on a positive note and saying that while all this is happening, they do absolutely show Samantha in a bright light. What a beautiful person, what a, what a beautiful soul. Uh seeing her interact with her with her with her kids, seeing her um um in the gym, jacked, you know, putting in the work uh to become a wrestler. Uh, just a lot of positive and bright energy. I was completely like heartbroken at the moments of her being able to see the ocean for the first time and how you know beautiful of a moment that is. And that's some of the last footage that some uh, her family has to see and seeing her truly happy, knowing, not knowing, should I say, this monster of a person that she's next to. But like, you know, this is the predatorial factor um, of, of who he is. It's, it's preying on these beautiful souls, these beautiful people. Uh, and this is so many little small things that we got to see about Sam that just really highlights what a beautiful person it is. And this is completely heartbreaking that she's uh, missing. And they they completely construct this timeline from the first time we see her in November 2015 to the last bit of contact that we had in November of 2016. Um, and, 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 and very much... Uh, getting un, un, getting an understanding of her upbringing her raising um and, and just her aspirations and 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 and, and you know and, and at the end of the day um you know wanting to make her kids proud wanting to do all this and and, and establish a good chain of, of of income to really help support her family not just her kids but her sisters as well too and it's just it's just sad and and again the bottom line is like uh, she, although she's uh she's canadian she's a canadian cree woman and 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 the the long for centuries documented um tr like tragedy and just complete disregard for safety for indigenous women now has its next example here um of just these women being disposable um uh, and, and 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 samantha fittler is just another case to that so it's sad and and, and, and although again they showed her in a positive light as you said, hopefully this creates a um, a bigger reach, a bigger network, um, and, and more folks uh, can 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 be involved in a positive way to really help bring her home. It's 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 again at the end of the day, this is a this is a uh, excuse me a missing persons case um, that you know is in a is in a, a niche community, and 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 and, and will say the complications is that she's Canadian, but this happened on American soil. And it happened in Florida, and she's not American. So everybody's like, I don't, what are we supposed to do? Um, so now we turn to the people, and this is a way of, of doing so to help bring her home so she could be with her family. And much like I uh, started this um, in, uh, interview, this review, I'm getting my words all choked up. This review in by saying that if you know anything about Sam's whereabouts, 800 226 1144 zero again 800-226-1140 let's get uh samantha fittler home um but yeah folks this is our review of dangerous breeds crime cons cats coming to peacock at november 22nd it is a binge drop so all three episodes are dropping on that day of hour each jump in the comments let us know your thoughts about it once you check it out and everybody be safe much love and happy holidays and thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you back with more reviews very soon